Welcome to the K20 Center's Zoom Into Your Career video series. These online career expos give students a way to explore many interesting careers and learn about their career options from volunteer professionals. Javier Elizondo is a video game producer that has worked for many studios, including Nintendo, over the course of his career. Eventually, he came to the K20 Center, where he makes educational games for students. Um, hi there, everybody. Thank you for taking the time to be in your classroom and uh, talk to me. Um, and I hope you guys, uh, I hope we make a lot of video game producers after this, uh, this talk. My name is Francisco Javier Elizondo, uh, and I'm the educational video game producer at the K20 Center here at the University of Oklahoma. Um, I'm a video producer and my job involves working with game designers and artists and programmers. And because it's educational, we also work with teachers and instructional designers and schools and the university and researchers uh, to make educational games. Educational games are very much like the games you play in your console, but they have uh, the purpose to, on top of entertaining you, uh, teach you something. Um, I, ha I have a bachelor's degree in communication. I'm from Mexico. I moved to the United States about 30 years ago. I did my bachelor's in Mexico, and um, I, did a little, little, I did a little bit of radio in Mexico, and I did a little bit of TV in Mexico, and then I moved to the States to do my master's in um, public communication and broadcast, or broadcasting, more properly said. And while I was working at the university, um, I had an assistantship to take care of the internal cable channel of the university. And because that was kind of like an easy job, I pick up some software. My boss saw what I was doing, he was interested, and I became a game producer in, in Illinois. And I started working uh, first for the university, and uh, we started setting up all our online classes, and then for the attorney general of the state of Illinois. And we were making games for the attorney general that they were used in the state fair. And from there, there was a bunch of other projects. Eventually, we landed a project that made me um, travel to Hawaii a lot. And in Hawaii, they liked what I was doing. We were making a game for Scholastic. And um, they offered me a position. And then I moved to Hawaii. And I was making video games in Hawaii for about 12 years. And um, after those 12 years in Hawaii, I had the opportunity to make a game that was um, published by Nintendo. And uh, maybe we could do a break here and I'll show you guys a trailer about that game. And then we could come back and, and keep talking about what uh, video game producing is all about. Okay, so I'm going to share a trailer and um, we'll come back in a second. From the darkest reaches of space comes a perturbingly pilfering, pointy-nosed cosmic evil, ready to unleash a dastardly deed of dog-napping and diabolically demented deep lake plan of deception and destruction. Who dares enter the galaxy in search of your precious pooch? Who will risk life and limb in strange and scary worlds? Who will persist and prevail through the cruel and chilling calamity that is Cosmos Chaos? Cross, crisscross, and cross Chris your way through sweltering, scorching, boiling, blistering, horribly hot and humid habitats, loony landscapes, and precarious panoramas. Battle a barrage of super bad bots bent on stopping you at every turn with their mechanically maniacal methods of mayhem. Cooperate or clash with the most cockamamie collection of the cosmos's kookiest characters as you pile up power and progress with proficiency through the most mentally mind-blowing and mind-building intergalactic encounter of any guy. From planet to planet, with your bot, your wits, and your weapon, the chase is on to bring down the most notorious, most inglorious, most uproarious evil mastermind in the universe and bring your captured canine companion back 
in the biggest adventure to ever hit the smallest screen. Save your dog, save the universe, and kick box. It's planetary pandemonium. It's a robotic rumble. It's a meteoric melee. It's brain-busting metal. It's, it's dramatic pause. Cosmos Chaos! Exclamation point! So that's, that's the game we made when I was in Hawaii. And um, after we made this game, I went back and um, to what was originally my, my roots and I became the director of communications for the company that I was working for. And it was there that uh, the university had, uh, the University of Oklahoma had a really nice project. We were about, to, they were about to do a game for um, intelligence analysts. Uh, for the CIA and the FBI and the military intelligence and they invited me over and we made another game for them uh, and then I like Norman so much that I stayed <laughs> and we've been making educational games ever since. Um, to give you an idea how a work day for a game producer goes, um, you usually in the morning at the beginning of the day you meet with all your team and, and then your team you probably have um, game designers who are the guys who are in charge of making your game fun and engaging. You have an instructional designer who is in charge of making sure that there's something educational about everything you do in the game. You have an art director who makes care, takes care of the look and feel of the game. You have animators, you might have a technical artist, you might have an illustrator, you might have a character designer, um, you also have programmers, you might have a gameplay programmer, a database designer, a network programmer, a tech lead who tells all those guys what to do. And we get all together in the morning, we all talk about what we did the day before, what we're going to do today, and if anybody has any problems or obstacles, and then you come in as a video game producer and you make sure that they, um, they can solve the problem, they have all the things they need to do the job, um, that they are working together and the game is coming along all time and it not, it's not costing a lot of money. Um, typically, uh, somebody who's coming out of school uh, will get a job in a game company or in a studio like the K20 Center. And uh, it takes a little while for, to be, for you to be a, a producer. You might enter as an artist or as a programmer or as a designer. I was basically I started as an instructional designer and then became a producer. And it takes about five years to become a producer. And when you're a producer, um, you can make anywhere between 75 to 250, depending on what company you're working on. That is 75,000 a year to 250. And if you're working for one of those AAA companies, the ones that you guys are playing on your consoles at home, you might even be making more. Uh, it depends on what your, your goals in life are and, and how good you are, really. Um, right now, we are about to uh, release a game to all the schools. Probably you guys, if you, if you want, you probably can play this game that I'm going to show you a trailer for. And um, if you want to play it, you talk to your teacher and they can request access to the K20 Center. And you can... You can use it. Uh, I'll play the trailer and then we can talk a bit about what the game is about and what, um, what you can find, all right? So I'm gonna share it and then we can talk about it.
Okay, so this last game that we put together um, is about exploring professional life, uh, about trying to learn what you need to study the things that interest you, what do you need to get to college, how much it costs, how long does it take, uh, and along the way of completing your, your career and getting on with your life, there's a bunch of fun things that happen to you. So hopefully you guys get to play it and hopefully you like it. Uh, and I don't know, let's open the floor to see if there's any questions. All right, so we'll go ahead and we're gonna start the question um, section. If you have, again, any questions, please type them in the chat room. And if you have the ability to ask a question, you can just say you have a question and we'll have you unmute your mic. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Our first question is, which field is your undergrad degree in? My undergrad uh, is in communication science. All right, awesome. Um, we have has a question, but they would like the student to ask the question. So um, if you would go ahead and unmute yourself and have that student ask their question. Yep, you're ready. How, what gave him the idea to design this game? Um, the last game, the last the game that we put together? Okay. So usually um, what happens is we, we are working in, in, we're working with the school and then uh, Scott Wilson, who's my boss, comes in and says, uh, we need to talk to kids about their options um, after they finish high school. And then he leaves and it's our job to figure out how, how do we talk to you guys about it and we make it fun, engaging, uh, and educational. So he basically, um, the, the original idea of what are we gonna be teaching comes from, um, from somebody else, from outside our, our, our studio. And then we all get together and start figuring out, we throw ideas and we have a bunch of brainstorms and uh, we build it together as a team. Awesome. All right. It looks like um, has a question. If you'd go ahead and unmute yourself, um, and if you would re-mute yourself for us, please. How long have you been making games for? You Did you catch long? that, Javier? <laughs> a little louder. <laughs> how long have you been making games? Uh, I've been making games for about 25 years. That's a very long time, man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, next question. How many games have you designed? Um, I've designed or been part of the design of about 20 games, more or less. It's a lot of games. All right. Um, how's a question? You are free to unmute your mic. Uh, around how long does it take you to design all of your games? Um, thank you. It, it depends on what the game is about. So um, we've designed games in about four or five months. Um, this game that you guys can play, the one that we just finished, was designed in about eight months. But we, I've the 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 game that I show you guys first for the Nintendo that that game took about two years to get completed. Um, so it depends on 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 the subject and what the intended audience is. But anywhere between six months and a year. Awesome. All right. Next question. Um, what is the title of your most popular game? Okay. Uh, the. the the most popular game is there's a game that we made to teach uh, financial literacy. And it's called Mind Your Own Business. Um, no, Mind Your Own Budget, I'm sorry. And that game uh, is on the iPad. 
and it has over 100,000 downloads. And every semester, about 10,000 kids all over the world uh, play that game. Uh, about 5,000 of those kids here in, in, in Oklahoma. So that is the most popular game. That's awesome. All right. Um, do any of our classrooms have any more questions? Even if you've already asked one, um, it looks like we've gone through the questions so far. So any others? All right, while people think about that, I actually have a question if that's okay. Um, Javier, what made you interested in um, game designing? Like what, what sparked your interest? Um, I was generally interested in production. I like to put things together um, and see a final product that is tangible, that I can see and I can uh, share. And um, I did production for radio and then I did production for television. And when game came to be uh, an opportunity, I picked it up and from the first game until now, I, I found it to be very rewarding. There is nothing more exciting than uh, seeing somebody who's enjoying your games, who's laughing at the jokes that you thought were funny and that is understanding something you're trying to communicate. Okay, great. We have two final questions. So our last um, one, well, our second to last, wants to know what is the most common programming language? Um, I can tell you what the most common programming language is on game design, and it might not be the most common programming language for everybody. Um, we use C Sharp. That is the most common language for making games. Um, I think the most common language for everything else is Java, but we use C Sharp. Okay, great. And who has a question that they would like to ask, so you can go ahead and ask your question. What's your favorite thing about your job? Um, my favorite thing about the job is, like I was telling Jamie a second ago, my favorite thing about the job is then when we finish the game, and we deliver it to you guys, and I can see some of you enjoying the game and laughing at the jokes we made or understanding uh, something that we're trying to share with you. That is the most gratifying part of the job, getting the job done and sharing it with others. And our last question I like, but this is so great that I have to ask it. <laughs> um, so, um, would like to know what should kids study in high school to start on this career path? Um, okay. Um, I will, there, there's two things that, that have been uh, invaluable for me. Uh, the first is English. Study English and uh, make a habit of reading because reading is most, most games that you've ever played are based on literature and uh, understanding plot, understanding character development and, and reading, having that facility. Reading uh, works a muscle in your brain. And if you start reading now, it will get easier as you move along. So everything that has to do with reading, composition, literature, English. And the other one is math. Math, um, at least, feel very confident with principles of algebra uh, because um, that will help you be a good project manager, which is also a job uh, of a producer. 